Howdy, this is Eddie with another episode of Corn Fed Bushcraft. Take a brief minute tonight, figured I'd make a video on a <clears throat> little process I'm in the in the process of learning, if you will, of uh, knife blade etching. Uh, tonight's my uh, first attempt at this. Figure uh, why not make a video of it, and since it's my first time, see how it goes, and uh, if I can uh, do this on my first time, then I'm pretty sure... Well, just about anybody can. So uh, let me get a knife blade and uh, get in there and uh, see what we can get worked out. All right, we're inside now. You'll have to uh, excuse the lighting. It's not the best in here. We've got one of these little cheap pocket knives from Frost Cutlery called the uh, Levain, I believe it is. Um, figure uh, we mess it up about a buck pocket knife so uh, probably buy one at a gas station for five or buy one for a dollar off the of late night TV shows so um, we mess it up it's not that big of a loss all right first off on this pocket knife right here on the end you can't see it because I've already removed it but you can see that hole right there pretty good there's a little uh, star shaped Allen wrench type of bolt in there you want to take that out. Uh, take that out. There's a washer. Most good quality pocket knives have two washers in there. A plastic one that goes on the clip side and a metal one that goes on the uh, show surface side. Uh, this one, being uh, El Cheapo, only had the plastic one on the back side. And uh, the one that's supposed to be metal is actually just a raised piece of plastic in there. Uh, again, very show of uh, the uh, cheap quality of the knife. Uh, I do, however, like the uh, texturing on the uh, grip of this knife, so I figured uh, if it turned out, it might be uh, turned out to look decent. It might be worth having. All right. Now, next thing I want to talk about is after you get the knife out, um, I'm going to be using purple just for the uh, effects of the visibility, so it can be seen good on camera. Main thing to remember is this is nail polish, in case I didn't mention that earlier. You want to coat the areas that you want to remain shiny and smooth. On this side of the blade, I've demonstrated uh, the most, in most important places to coat first. And that is right there where, this, where that bolt runs through the knife blade. Because you want that to remain smooth. You want it to have that steady action, smooth action, open and closing. And you definitely want the edge. Um, you let that acid get on the edge and it's going to be hard to sharpen. Alright, now, after you've done this, you want to, well, then you'll want to either remove this stud or paint this stud because you don't want the acid hitting the only way you got to open the, uh, the uh, blade. Alright, then after you get this done, you want to choose a pattern, a design, if you will, to put on this blade that, you know, screams you, you know, your personality and uh, something you'd be proud to carry. Me personally, I am going for the spiderweb effect. And uh, I'm going to continue this pattern on the other side. And uh, I think that's going to be an incredible pattern. The purple areas on this blade are going to be a bright, bright silver and the rest of it will be the dull acid burnt acid edge. Alright, sorry about that. Camera battery went dead. Took that opportunity to go ahead and finish out the other side. As you can see, we went ahead and we put a little polish over the uh, logo there that said uh, Frost Cutlery. Figured uh, what the heck, we'd go ahead and save that. Alright, now, the solution we have here, which as you can see I've got mixed up in an old paste piccani sauce jar. That way we can put the lid on it and clearly label what it is. You don't want to uh, get that mixed up with anything. Alright, this is it right here. Let's get back here a little bit so you can see it. I'm sitting here on top of the washing machine. Alright, this is called PCB Etching Solution. Uh, a little bit out of focus there. But you buy it at Radio Shack. Cost $11 and 40 something cents plus tax. Not too bad. You can, like I said, put it in a jar like that do several several knives uh, it'll get a little weaker with time from what I'm gathering but uh, with the weakness you can just increase the amount of time you leave the uh, blade dipped in the acid 
my plan is hopefully that if this style of blade works um, turns out looking decent uh, y'all have seen my antler knife that I did in another video somewhere right back here with the turquoise in the handle um, I would like to make this into a uh, wall hanger piece uh, piece of show piece you know with that could actually be functioning and still you know uh, have the looks to hang on the wall all right right here we got this little piece of wire with a hook in it something that the uh, acid ain't gonna tear up too bad and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run that through the hole here on the end now I want to point out make sure you got your nail polish inside of that hole you don't want that acid to make that hole any bigger make your uh, knife to have too much play or too much waller in it all right let's get this hooked in here all right we are hooked in now we're going to take submerge this in this acid for probably about a total of 30 minutes we're going to check on it back in 15 minutes see what it looks like and then uh, again in another 15 minutes so I'm going to submerge this and uh, I will get back with you all right 15 minutes has passed let's pull this bad boy out and take a look Wow, look at how dark that's getting. You can still see the webbing in there. Now, if you remember, the webbing is going to be the bright silver. Uh, I think we want to let that get a little bit darker. We're going to do the, the final 15 minutes. Um, it's really a uh, personal preference thing from what I've gathered. Um, depending on how dark and how deep you want the acid to eat in the non-protected areas. So, I mean, it's all up to how you want your blade to look. Alright, 15 more minutes has passed. It's now been submerged for a total of 30 minutes. And it is nice and dark. Alright, so our next step is we are going to take this out. We're going to rinse it with cold water, neutralize the acid, and then wash it with a mild detergent. And I will get right back with you. All right, now you can see that nice light charcoal color. Next step of this process is going to be um, removing it with the uh, nail polish, with the uh, nail polish remover, and this should leave us a slightly raised, shiny surface in all the areas that the uh, nail polish currently is. Now, if you remember earlier, just how shiny this knife was, and if you look at it now, it's you know pretty dramatic difference uh, I have seen when some videos where the blades have been left in upwards of an hour to an hour and a half and it gets that uh, hammered Damascus look to it real dark areas uh, but like I said earlier it is mostly just preference I'm more of the uh, shadow effect to the blade is what I'm lo really looking for all right so let's get this cleaned up and uh, I'll be back with you and show you what it looks like all right i am back knife is clean and assembled take a look at that tell me that isn't just 100 percent gorgeous take a look at the other side nice sparkle nice dark background nice little glitter all right i think that worked out real nice uh being that this was a uh, cheap knife had to do a little work on the uh, locking mechanism of it. Do a little uh, adjustment on the tension head there. Get it to where it open a little smoother and a little nicer. Nothing a little buffing wouldn't fix. Now I have seen on this style where they would take a mild grit, maybe 800 grit sandpaper, and uh, rebuff this uh, blade. That would lighten the inside a little bit, but. Um, I kind of like that dark background. I think it looks nice. Uh, got a real good shine. Kept the edge. I don't have to resharpen this knife. It's really worked out nice. All right, this has been another episode of uh, Corn Fed Bushcraft. Um, tell me what you think. I mean, uh, first time I've done something like this, uh, I would give it a pretty easy uh, recommendation. It wasn't that bad. I would think uh, just about anybody could do this uh, with the uh, proper uh, preparations, of course. Uh, so now, next step is going to be design. Come up with what kind of design we want to put on that uh, 
nice antler knife I made. Uh, again, uh, you want to sling me some suggestions there, I'm uh, more than willing to listen. Um, so this has been, like I said, another episode of Corn Fed Bushcraft, and until next time.